Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kyle Hill's videos, specifically this nukes don't exist conspiracy theory. Now I've never heard of this, presumably the idea that nuclear weapons simply never existed. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's find out what this is all about. This is a piece of rock, sand, and other material that was fused into a kind of glass on July 16th, 1945. So he's referring to the Trinitite, the physical evidence left over from a nuclear explosion that has existed long after the fact. Okay. The tremendous source of Pretty heat good way that to created debunk this. this glass the Trinity test, the world's first nuclear explosion. This radioactive piece of Trinitite, therefore, is a tangible timestamp of the millisecond that we entered the nuclear age. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good evidence right there against the, uh, this crazy conspiracy theory. Or is it? Last time I talked about nuclear weapons, I was met with a flurry of comments from a brand new conspiracy theory I had never heard of. Do nuclear weapons actually exist? Or is it just one big government fool em up? Given the government way too much credit. <laughs> That's one thing about conspiracy theories that they seem to give people too much credit, and a lot of it can be sliced away just with Occam's razor. But it's fascinating to uh, think of that. Though, I wonder what these people think of nuclear power. Do they think it exists? Are they pro-nuclear power? Because a lot of negative stigma appears to come from its association with nuclear weapons. In fact, when you hear the term nuke plants, it's mainly used by some of these protesters because they think these plants are somehow involved in either making nukes or are just as dangerous as nukes or something involving nuclear weapons. The resurgence in this weird conspiracy theory seems to stem from this single tweet from Owen Benjamin. It has almost 30 million views. He's looking at old test footage and saying, well, where is the radiation? Why weren't the cameras vaporized? Aren't they called X's, not tweets now? No, are Where's, why weren't the, okay. <laughs> Where's the radiation? Well, to be fair, visible light is radiation. So you're, you're looking at the radiation right now if you want to use that sort of twisted logic. But how about the fact that you can't see it? <laughs> Radiation's invisible. <laughs> Ionizing radiation is invisible anyway. But I guess they're one of those seeing is believing sort of things. I guess maybe to these people that atoms don't exist either because they're too small to see. Also, radio doesn't exist either because you can't see radio waves. But in regards to nuclear power, obviously nuclear power is a thing. It powers a lot of the planet percentage wise. And I have seen the Cherenkov radiation in spent fuel pools with- Wouldn't that be, if nuclear power didn't exist, well, I'm not even sure how to touch that one. It's like, cause I've just, been so close to it, have physically done it for over 10 years. And yeah, that's basically saying like, I wonder what they think I did. Like I was part of a cover up. I was some sort of actor, someone working on just a secret cover up project or something. I don't know. What, what would that make me as a nuclear engineer if nuclear power didn't exist? Someone going in and running a fake plant, or maybe it's like a, uh, or just playing with a giant simulator. To be fair, we do play with a simulator, but it's but it's for drills. We actually run a real nuclear plant. I'm kind of at a loss of what to say of it because everything, <laughs> it's just so blatantly wrong. To be clear, I don't want nuclear weapons to exist. I wish that they didn't. I think nuclear annihilation is still one of the biggest existential threats to humanity. I don't agree with that. I still don't think it's an existential threat. And I know for those of you who have watched my channel a lot, you see me regularly talk about this that we just simply don't have enough nuclear weapons to wipe out all life on Earth. They're simply not that powerful. It would be horrible and the worst thing ever for a full-scale nuclear exchange, but their destructive capability has been greatly exaggerated by things you see in movies. To the point where there's actually a trope called deus ex nucina, 
that I saw on TV tropes, that nuclear weapons are as powerful as the plot demands it. Now, that's not the case in real life. We have the eyewitness testimony of some of the smartest men to ever live. Men who, it should be said, didn't want nukes to exist either. I actually met someone, this was a while ago, so this person is no longer with us, who worked on the Manhattan Project. This is when I was still in high school doing a summer program. Uh, he worked at, he was either a professor or maybe just a guest lecturer at, at North Carolina State University. I don't remember his name, but he worked on the Manhattan Project and he even had a piece of trinitite that he took with them as a bit of a souvenir. It takes just a few seconds of walking through the Peace Park Museum in Hiroshima, like I did, to see the horrors that only a fission-powered weapon can produce. This is beginning to remind me of the Holocaust deniers. There haven't been one or two or three nuclear tests after Trinity. There have been over 2,000 and all over the world by many different governments that would all have to be conspiring over many decades. Yeah, that's... Now this is actually kind of starting to remind me of the conspiracy theories around global climate change that claim it's this international community of people that may or may not even be people. They might be some sort of reptilian beasts that are looking to conquer the world or something. Though in this case, I don't even... Like, what's the benefit of that? What what benefit, um, even if all this craziness existed, would these people be receiving by claiming nuclear weapons to be real? Just that people think they're scary and also thinking they could destroy Earth. It could, the thing that's closer to a conspiracy theory is thinking that nuclear weapons could actually could actually destroy the earth. It's interesting seeing this other end of the spectrum saying they're not they're not real. And again, the whole thing about nuclear power not being real, I mean, I don't know. May, maybe I am part of some crazy conspiracy theory. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm I'm too terrible of a liar for that. <laughs> Because of the thousands of nuclear tests over the years, we can still detect these radioactive signatures that have no better explanation today. Yeah, it's that's the one thing about radiation and stuff. If you're looking the right way with detectors, it's very difficult to cover things up. Now, on the other hand, you can get some level of false positives just by having elevated the normal readings, but the isotopes you get from nuclear weapons, the fission products, are very easy to fingerprint. So the idea of saying it's just from increased concentrations of like uranium and thorium deposits producing radon gas, well radon gas isn't isn't the same thing you get from from a nuclear explosion or a nuclear accident for that matter. It's gonna be things like iodine, xenon, strontium, cesium, things that are characteristic of fission in uranium-235 or plutonium-239. It's in the Earth. Astronauts have trained in nuclear test craters to simulate the moon. Are all astronauts lying about this? Oh, now we're gonna get back to the whole moon landing conspiracy theory that that didn't happen. It's interesting that in this one, I'm noticing the interconnections between, between the no nukes, conspiracy, the climate change one, and the moon one. I'm wondering if the idea, what if all of these conspiracy theories were a conspiracy in and of itself? Like getting super meta here, and the conspiracy theories were implanted by, like the lead conspiracy theorists are really world government employees because these conspiracy theories make the government or the UN or whoever more powerful appear to be more powerful than they actually are. Wouldn't that be something? I don't seriously believe that, but that's just a funny idea to me. The Anthropocene, a geologic epoch where human activity becomes distinguishable and dominating. Now that's an interesting one, and this isn't the first time I've heard that about the Anthropocene era, and it's because, yeah, we can have noticeable impact on the planet's geology from our activities that will be recorded and will be able to be accessed millions of years from now, which is fascinating. Talk about making your mark on Earth, literally. This is all not that much better than something like flat Earth theory, which oh, no. is readily disprovable, and it's saddening that it all gets amplified, enforced, maintained 
by social media echo chambers. Now that one, to me, the flat earth one, I don't know if anyone actually takes it seriously. I think that one's done mostly but just by a bunch of trolls. Because that, yeah, it's, it's up there with saying nuclear power plants do not exist. If anyone can try to explain some sort of work logic about how nuclear power plants aren't supposed to work, because I'm way too close to it to even comprehend something like that, please feel free to share something like that down in the comments of how one would even think something like that, because I just don't get it. To me, nuclear power is as natural as breathing. It'd be a bit like saying, well, breathing doesn't work. This was a weird one, though, and I appreciate Kyle for... Uh, bringing that to everybody's attention. And I can't say this is a conspiracy theory I ever expected to show up, but I guess welcome to the internet. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.